Welcome to this video, A Light with Love. We are glad you've decided to join us as we name the sadness we hold in common and as we remember. Obviously, we would prefer to do this in a public place where we could see each other and offer a hug or a handshake or have a little visit. But this year, we are doing many things differently. More than anything else, we want you to know that we've been touched by the lives shared with us, not because they died, but because they lived. We've been the unintended guests on the journey and our lives have been changed because of it. Our need to honor the lives lost and support the survivors and caregivers is important. We hope that the warmth we feel might be conveyed in this short video. Feel free to share it with those who might benefit. Stones and light are powerful images. For many cultures, stones are used to mark the place where people are buried, and it is common for us to light a candle in remembrance. In this memorial, we are acknowledging both the light of their lives and the mark they've left on us. We invite you to find a comfortable space, light a candle, remember your loved one, and be with many who share a loss. Let's begin this time together with a conversation between Margaret Ellen Disney, Chair of the Aberdeen Palliative Care Society, and Andy Coase, the Vice Chair. I think, for most people, what matters most is being connected to others, to family, loved ones, friends, our community. Rabbi Harold Kushner would agree with that statement. He is the well-known author of a book called When Bad Things Happen to Good People, and he describes it this way. We want to know that we, or our loved ones, have been part of the fabric of life and have left our own unique thread in that fabric. He says, we are part of what gave strength to all the other threads. We mattered. With the death of a loved one, it is as though there is a hole in the fabric and it can't just be patched over. It must be mended. Mending is going to take time and must be done so that the other threads remain strong. Well, from its beginning, which is now over 30 years, the Palliative Care Society has held fast to supporting compassionate end-of-life care services in our community. For many years, a time of remembrance service has been an opportunity for survivors of those who have passed, the professional staff they encountered along this journey, and members of the society to come together to honor the memory of these much loved individuals and bear witness to the fact that they mattered. Recognition of loss is an important part of addressing grief and bereavement of beginning the process of mending. We hope you find this remembrance video both comforting and meaningful. We felt this was important. Strong. 
Fresh flowing beacon stretching like a ribbon in the night. Join hands and hearts and wander at the side. For with caring and compassion, we can help to make things right. You know deep within there's a light. There's a light. Chief Andrea Paul. COVID-19 has had a detrimental impact on our many practices as a Mi'kmaq community. So like everyone else, we have continued to work through our process of death and ritual. Typically, when someone passes in our community, the church bell will be rung to let the community know of our community loss. Family and friends gather quickly to offer their support. Many of our loved ones are waked in their homes or in our church, and the community helps with this preparation. We wake our loved ones for two nights and three days. During this time, our community brings food, provides comfort and support. Visiting is at any time, day or night. People stay at the wake for the full duration of the time. There have been times when a family will request a sacred fire, which takes place near the wake and allows for individuals to offer tobacco and prayer to our loved one that is making their journey to the spirit world. We honor and celebrate our loved ones with a community dinner after the funeral. During the dinner, we have a solid day, which is an auction, to raise funds for the family to cover any funeral costs. We are very community-minded, which has been difficult during this pandemic. We remember all those who have passed within our community and yours. In peace and friendship, we honor and remember. Imsit Nogama, all our relations. Hello, I'm Jerry Farrell. I've been associated with palliative care in Pictou County for the latter half of my career. I watched it grow from an idea in the mid 1980s to the robust program it is today with the community-based program as well as the in-hospital palliative care unit. After an earlier career as a family physician, I discovered that palliative care was where I belonged and began to embrace the idea and sought the education to go with it. Over the years, I've realized that palliative care was and is a calling rather than a job. I consider it an absolute privilege to be part of the care team and to be accepted by patients and families as they journey through or live with a life-threatening illness. To connect with someone at such a vulnerable time is indeed a privilege that I'm always humbled by. These are often short, intense relationships with long lasting memories, and I always feel I receive more than I give. Although I'm now largely retired, I still feel the pull to the bedside, 
as that has always been my comfortable place in medicine. These are your loved ones. This is your family. Thank you for affording me that privilege. I'm Billy McDonald and have volunteered for years with the Palliative Care Society and on the ward. Just over two years ago, I began volunteering with PALS, a palliative support group. PALS is a joint project of the Aberdeen Palliative Care Society and the Trinity United Church, who provides the fully accessible meeting space. Companionship, conversation, and confidentiality provides a strong foundation for those in attendance. PALS quickly took on a life of its own, becoming a safe environment to laugh or to cry, knowing that folks were sharing a space with those on a similar challenging journey. We share friendship and love learning from the guest speakers. We haven't met since the virus arrived, but we look forward to a day when this valuable service may resume. This poem, selected by our group for our first brochure, was written by Laura Ling Edwards of the UK. The group felt that it represented many of the days in the life of a palliative care patient. The Mountain Poem. If the mountain seems too big today, then climb a hill instead. If the morning brings you sadness, it's okay to stay in bed. If the day ahead weighs heavy and your plans feel like a curse, there is no shame in rearranging. Don't make yourself feel worse. If a shower stings like needles and a bath feels like you'll drown, if you haven't washed your hair for days, don't throw away your crown. A day is not a lifetime, a rest is not defeat. Don't think of it as failure, just a quiet, kind retreat. It's okay to take a moment from an anxious, fractured mind. The world will not stop turning while you get realigned. The mountain will still be there when you want to try again. So climb it in your own time and love yourself till then. Nobody is ever really ready to hear the news of a life-threatening illness. The impact is felt personally and ripples into every aspect of life. As social workers, we are invited into people's lives because of some of those other aspects. We hear about relationships that need healing. We see beyond the illness and into the lives of each patient. It's been our privilege to support the families through some of the really tough days and to offer tangible things that make a difference. Maybe what we wanna say here is thank you for trusting us with the details. We've been only too happy to connect the resources with those who need them and to provide some support along the way. We've also spent time getting to know your loved ones, individuals who matter to you and to our community. They also matter to us. So hearing what was in their heart Listening for what wasn't being said and respecting confidences allowed us the experience of knowing you also were loved by them. Thanks for sharing your family with ours.
I'm Rachel McDonald, the community-based nurse in the palliative care program. I've been with many of you in your homes and know there are children also affected by loss. Grief is a unique experience to each person, no matter how old or young they are. To all the parents, grandparents, and caregivers who are coping with their own feelings of loss while also raising children who are processing their own grief, know that you're not alone. This is a challenging time for families. We often forget grief is an expression of love. A child who is old enough to feel and express love is old enough to feel and express grief. Children have an inspiring way of expressing love and grief simultaneously through profound sadness and amazing joy. This is an astonishing skill. It's one that we as adults could strive to reawaken. Let your children be your guide. Allow them to show you how to navigate their own story of love. Talk with them, share stories, and remind them that although their memory of their loved one may change over time, that you promise to help them remember. Hello, I'm Dr. Ann Kwasnick, and I want to thank you for being a part of this remembrance. Our patients and families are at the center of our concern. It has been a very challenging time for all of us, one that makes me feel deeply for our grieving families. The burden of quarantine restrictions and the fears related to spreading or acquiring COVID-19 has brought on new insights into how much our social and human connections really mean to us, to our patients and their families, to our staff and care providers as well. Our palliative care unit has always meant to feel like a sanctuary to the unwell and to provide comfort and offer a sense of hominess and tranquility. The new restrictions have made it quite uncomfortable to our patients and staff alike. The visitor restrictions in the name of safety for all seem to take prevalence to our patients' isolation and inability to have their loved ones close by. Our staff, from our nurses, social workers, music therapists, administrators, have tried to bridge this role as best as we could. Nothing can replace the presence of a loved one and we acknowledge the pain and grief in these uncertain times. Grieving the death of a loved one is especially complicated by the inability to do so in ways we have been accustomed to. I do hope there is a spirit of community and shared grief imparted through this session that will bring a sense of peace, love, and caring. Our cairn is built, our candles are lit, and we've come to the end of our time together. Let us take a minute and breathe it all in to remember and be grateful. For life and love shared, for the love that remains in our hearts, and for the opportunity to claim it, we are touched. Be at peace. You are not alone. <laughs>